Hey everybody, how are you? Welcome to What's New Wednesday with Allison. Welcome to St. Patty's Day. Oh, I'm not wearing green. Must I wear green? I don't really have green, so it's not one of my colors. I don't really wear it, so sorry about that. But I am part, I, I'm actually mostly Irish, I think. Uh, my mother is like 98% Irish, so... Um, that's I should be having green, but I don't. I do no green, no green for me. <laughs> but happy St. Patty's Day here in New York. It's a big deal. Uh, New York being the founding, the place where many, many Irish immigrants came and many other immigrants came uh, throughout the centuries and decades. Um, so I'm one of them. My family came back way, way, way long ago. And I'm not just Irish. I'm a bunch of other things because you know what? I am American. I think I'm the fourth generation, fifth generation. I don't know. And I got my daughter, my grandchildren, lots of generations here in the United States. So <clears throat> I have been struggling with trying to keep up with everything. I think that this coronavirus is one year ago that everything shut down. Vacations were canceled. Uh, holidays were canceled. Socializing was canceled, at least for the most of us. And it's been a very difficult year because of all the social distancing. Last year when we went to the beach, we weren't even able to use the restrooms because um, many of them were closed to keep every social distancing and all that other stuff. So even going to the beach was hard. A lot of things are hard. You have to wear a mask now. So it's very um, stressful. It's been a really stressful year. What's been the hardest part for me is not seeing my family and not going on vacation. My mother lives in North Carolina, so visiting people long distance is not something we're ready to all, you know, at least some of us are not ready to jump on the plane and go, um, go, uh, on vacation or go visiting. So, and financially many people have, uh, let me just, I'm going to shut this off my on-screen agenda. Yeah, because today I want to talk about virtual learning. We have virtual meetings, video calls, telemedicine, and the future is now. So some of the things that came out with COVID have affected us long term. They're not going to be going away. Um, if that hide it, okay. Uh, I hope that when this gets launched, it says what's new Wednesday, because every time I try and do it, this stupid be live is something different. I have to try stream yard. I didn't get a chance to do that yet, but I was reading how telemedicine is really a way of getting people to be taken care of without having to leave their homes. And maybe they have a physical impairment. They can't leave the home or they don't drive. They have to take public transportation they can't afford the, the Uber right now because of coronavirus or all the income for people. You know, really $1,400 is all well and good uh, from the government. But at some point, we're going to have to pay this government back. We are not the type of government where we just hand out money to people haphazardly. So um, we have a long road to recovery. I believe it's going to take five years, in my opinion, for Manhattan to really bounce back to the theater district, maybe three years. But here we are a year later and Manhattan, nothing, it's still desolate. So we, I mean, I'm a city girl. So to me, I base everything on Manhattan. And businesses have decided that they are going to many businesses, not all businesses, but many businesses where you don't have to be at the office 
every single day are now going to trans, you know, kind of um, transition to keeping this remote working as part of their business plan as business model. And I really think it's good because if you can manage to work for yourself and work from home and be regimented, that's all it really takes. People say, how do you take working from home? And it really is a mindset of, well, when I'm coming to work, now I go and I get dressed every day. I put my hair, I do my hair for the most part. I do my makeup, even if it's just a little, you know, not much, but just a little something so that when I feel like I want to come live on the camera, I can. And also makes me feel better when I look at myself in the mirror and I say, oh, I look pretty. Okay, I got everything. I look, I look together and I feel better. So I get dressed, I put my jewelry on, I, I, I'm wearing my slippers, but nobody needs to know that. I'm comfortable, but I still look presentable. And um, kind of like even when I was a stay-at-home mom and I just would take care of my daughter, I never was a frumpy, throw the sweats on, hair in a ponytail kind of girl, let's leave the house. No, I always had to do my lipstick or fix my hair or just make myself presentable to go out into the world. So when I'm working, I get myself ready and I do my routine in the morning. I clean up, I take care of my whatever, I read my emails and then I straighten up the kitchen and the dishwasher, whatever. I do throw a load of laundry in. And then once I've decided to start working, I sit down at my desk and the rest of the day is spent on working on on my business. So I do a lot of sitting at home virtually working and whatnot. The bit, and I've been doing that for years. My showroom closed in 2009. So ever since 2009, I've been working remotely from my residence. What is really terrible about working alone is you are alone. And not having these social gatherings for business and the shows and all of those other external um, influences, it's very hard to work at home from by yourself. So what you need to do is get yourself out and do something that you like to do other than just working. Unfortunately, now we have Corona and that's really limited. Like if you want to go to the bar and sit at the bar, listen to some music and have a glass of wine, you really can't do that. It's uh, limited. It's people, everything is so still so messed up. So we're not going to be out of this until 2022, in my opinion going to take, you know, by the time we all get vaccinated and things happen and everything moves on. So in the meantime, we have to deal with all of this remote learning, remote kitchen and bath industry show, the um, virtual appliances show. I'm reading something now, a virtual prime time. It's actually going on right now. And it's a marketing group, um, virtual prime time format. So it didn't go very well for KBiz and they're having this virtual prime time for uh, a buying groups in the appliance industries. And um, <clears throat> they're just doing a lot of things virtually and it's really starting to get to me. I can't stand it. I thought that the KBiz was not, you know, you could, it was like just going on to websites and you know, I'll just go on to whatever website and look through their catalog that way. So getting the same interaction that you get with um, being in person and physical, touching things and feeling things, you don't get that from the Zooms and the webinars and all that stuff. So in all the, the things that we have benefited from with coronavirus, as far as being able to develop these ways of working remotely and 
commu tele medicine, telemedicine and cleaning things, um, all the in inventions that are now, uh, we got the, the new virus um, vaccine was developed, uh, all kinds of products and things have been developed because of this coronavirus. And I think that the use of touchless things inside of the house is uh, very, very important. Like the touchless faucets in the bathroom, probably the bathroom, the most important to be touchless, touchless toilet, touchless faucet and touchless towel, you know, a hand blower or something like that would be popular. Um, so the virtual it's in, of course, it's really cool to be able to Zoom. I talked Zoom to my friend the other night and Zoom with my cousin. But it can't take the place of being somewhere personal and being with the family that you love. And it's not so much that I want to give you a hug. It's that I want to see you in 3D. I want to see you in 3D. So I can get to see, talk, just the connection with people is, is really lacking. I can't wait till the weather gets warmer so that I can invite my friends over or they can invite me over to an outdoor gathering of some kind because I really, really miss my compadres it's really hard for me and i don't know about you but i do suffer from depression i do take medication okay who cares you care i don't care everybody needs something some people like it some people don't whatever i do but and it's hard for me it's hard i'm gonna i'm just confessing it's hard for me to stay motivated it's hard for me to keep a focus of what i'm going to talk about and what i'm going to do so this video conferencing and video learning, like online learning, online education, it's just, it's just become something that it's never going to change. It's going to only be more and more improved. It is kind of like the Jetsons where they had the screen doing the video calls. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was the fact that I, I read an article in the Kitchen and Bath News or one of those magazines, and they were saying one of the trends is uh, a, a here to stay is eliminating the wall upper cabinets to get rid of upper cabinets and just using shelves. So I proposed that question in my group. I said, hey, what do you think of this shelves versus wall cabinets? And I'm telling you, wall cabinetry is not going away. It might be utilized differently, but it's certainly still a part of the kitchen. All the designers or 90% of the designers that answered said that the clients don't want that or the clients only want a little bit of it. The clients still want storage. So according to what the clients are saying, the open shelving is nice, but it's not going to eliminate the need for some cabin, some upper cabinet storage. You can't have everything all down low. The same way that I think when you are doing a kitchen, probably the most used area is 15 inches off the floor and, you know, 15 inches off the, the, the ceiling. You know, how many times you really only using the first two shelves of your cab, the wall cabinet, and the upper shelf can be storage of some kind, whether it's a 30 inch high, 33, 36, 42, you're mostly using what's ever at your peripheral vision within your eyes and the bottom. So that's the area that gets used the most. Cabinets and the things that are way down low, like a warming drawer, um, the bottom drawer on a wall oven cabinet, 
those bottom drawers are hard to reach and hard to access. So it doesn't necessarily mean the best place for your items are down low. And also I had some, another person comment about the microwave being down low was that he was a tall person and having to bend to get the things out of the microwave drawer and lifting them up was something that that user decided he did he didn't like that idea of picking something up that's hot and then getting it out so there's no like either you got to have it up high and pull it out and put it down down low pick it up put it down you're you want to make sure you have your landing space wherever this is happening and and a lot of times even though it's in the microwave things come out hot so you want to make sure that you have a quick place to put them down. So it's very interesting to see what the industry says and then to see what the designers say. Um, I think what's also coming back now are the soft, lighter woods. The white and gray is going to be dominant, but we're having our softer, softer whites, softer creams and uh, not so much gray as it is grayish or gray beige, and your lighter woods, you're seeing a lot of quarter sawn or rift cut white oak with a pale whitish stain on it, very attractive. So to see all the different cuts of woods and the colors transforming uh, through the decades and the, the you know the, the years, it's very interesting what holds true. The most, the very traditional design is out. Transitional or sleek, more contemporary is in. But that heavy traditional is out. I do see a sense of... Um, like that lived in shabby chic. Uh, I remember when they came out with those, it was a big, huge thing. Shabby chic. I think that was the name of the store. I don't remember. It was white, like a white denim or white cotton uh, furniture or slip covers that looked wrinkled. They looked all wrinkled and haphazard and, you know, messy and, I guess that was where we started to come with the bohemian style, the shabby chic, the farmhouse look to be more casual. But that happened, that shabby chic was 20 years ago, 15 years, I think 20 years ago. Um, I'm dating myself. If you remember shabby chic and they had a store in Manhattan and everything like that. They were really popular, but like everything else, it comes in, it comes out, it comes in, it comes out. So a trend is something that you just have to kind of ignore because they come in and they go out. And if you want to say, oh, it's a trend, everything is going to be a trend. This year, um, this one particular color granite, or color quartz or co is going to be a trend. Blue is going to be a trend. Everything comes and goes and comes and goes and comes and goes. There are timeless designs and you try and make it a blend, but never design for the other people. Always design for yourself. Guide your clients in the, in the method that makes them more uh, open-minded and able to express what they want and to achieve in their design. We have more methods now where years ago, I would tell my customers to pull things from magazines. Now you could tell your customer to go on to um, like a Pinterest or a house to pull pictures from. Um, that's what I use Pinterest and house for with my clients is just to pull inspiration photos from if they haven't already done so. And um, that's really the best place to go looking for resources to, for information to portray what your customer wants. I always tell my customer, go on and pick a, a kitchen, even if, any room, whatever your inspiration. I was reading something that a designer's 
in, uh, inspiration for her client's kitchen was a mug that the client had. So let something be your own inspiration and don't focus on trends. Trends come and go and come and go and come and go. There's no such thing as timeless. There is, but there isn't. It's timeless. It's transitional. You know, everything gets dated in 20 years, no matter how hard you try. Okay, I'm 59. I 20 years ago, I was 39. I've changed. It happens to everything. People, things, product, merchandise. Everything is affected over time even the trends and the styles and what was old comes back. It's new again, very sixties and fifties looking things right now with retro. So when somebody says, is it a trend? Am I following a trend? Who, who are they that say there's a trend anyway? So somebody says, Oh, this is a trend. And everybody goes, Oh, it's a trend. It's a trend. It's a trend. It's a trend. And they follow. So be a leader, not a follower. Follow rules, but don't be afraid to be a rule breaker. Uh, well, again, with this traditional triangle, we can see that that traditional triangle is almost null at this point because of all the multi-uses of, of triangles. There's too many appliances in the kitchen just to have one. When the triangle was developed in the 19... 40s, I think it was, was meant to sell more kitchens, uh, 30s or 40s, to get you to think you needed to do your kitchen over because you, you should have this triangle. But that was a stove, the sink, and the refrigerator. Three, which makes a triangle. Now it's more of like an octagon because you got a dishwasher, a warming drawer, microwaves, steam ovens. What's the matter, Manny? You want to come? Come on. Come on. Let's get Manny. Here's Manny. Say hello to everybody. Here's Manny. Here's Manny. Poor little Manny. He's my old man, Manny. Yeah. He's, he's here for a while. He's almost 17. He's either 17 or 16. I got to go back. Yeah. Poor thing. I think he's going blind. But anyway, he's living under my desk right now. He's petrified. So um, you all know I have a ton of cats. So this is, it's, it's not a ton. It's enough. This is, I got my Manny right here. Um, his sister Patches, she's the one that moved all wet around the block to someone else's house. She's been living there for like eight years. <laughs> but anyway, um, the trend was the same. Should have written it down, Manny. You distracted me. You distracted me. Microwave. Oh, I was talking about the triangle. We got the, the sink, sometimes one main sink and a utility sink. We might have under counter refrigeration. We have our dishwasher, warming drawers. Uh, maybe we have a cooktop and a wall oven. Um and you could even have a coffee maker, a beverage center, um, and a baking center. So look at this. We have all of these appliances in the kitchen. And that's what we are doing is it's a, using appliances and storing our products, our utensils, our dishes, our food, our pots and pans. We're hiding them. So all this goes on in the kitchen and it's not necessarily all based on just that triangle. It's multiple triangles. Remember, I've said that before, uh, multiple triangles. So with the virtual learning, one of the good things about the virtual learning is that you could do it at your own pace. Now I do have the kitchen and bath design Academy and my separate Kitchen and Bath Design Academy Facebook group where there's continuing education and more um, information being shared uh, on a monthly basis. So it's really my goal to bring a learning center for designers 
interior designers, budding kitchen designers, kitchen designers that just want to get a, 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 a breeze up. The lighting course I presented in 2016 is not as relevant today as it was back then. It's changed. So everything changes and you need to be up on these things. So that's what I try to do uh, on a weekly basis. And that's my, my goal. At the end of this month, I will be having a lighting webinar um, just to get you started on some of the lighting that I've discovered uh, as far as the different units. And all. it's just so very, very complicated. But I'm so excited to bring you that information. I am. It's important to get the information to you guys so you can um, be really good designers. That's what I'm here to make sure the kitchen and bath industry stays strong with more offerings than from just the National Kitchen and Bath Association, because I'm really very qualified to teach courses and tell you what's going on and um, it just share my knowledge with you guys. Right, Manny? We share my knowledge. You're a super boy. <laughs> Manny. It's like, hello, everybody. Hello. Just a my man. You took a point. Took, took a point. Look how good he is. If we do anything to him, just took a point. <laughs> it's just a big mush. <laughs> anyway, that's my talk for today. Keep uh, an eye out for next week's What's New Wednesday. I'm very tired of doing all of this by myself. It's exhausting. I do have people who work for me, but I'm feeling the need for creativity, other people, and just a lot of external, um, what's the word I want to say? Oh, I don't know. I'm hanging in there. Hanging in there, guys. Let's hang in there together. Don't forget to uh, check out the free resources at the Kitchen and Bath Design Academy online. Go to my website, allisonsolar.com. You could check out what I have there. Uh, if you have any one-on-one -on -one issues, a project you're working on that you need help with, or something you could use a little guidance on, please reach out, make an appointment with me. I have my information on my website. And I just look forward to collaborating with all of you and teaching all of you and being a fabulous kitchen and bath um, group. I love you all for reaching out and, and supporting me and uh, taking the time to listen to me talk about interesting things. So anyway, have a great day. Happy What's New Wednesday. Peace out. If you want to reach out and say hi, you could do that too. <laughs> Take care, bye, guys. Bye-bye.